In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a color gamut mask to create a landscape painting. I'll be painting with Corel Painter 2020 today, but you can follow along with your art application of choice. So up in the top right is my color gamut mask that I selected. The three hues are kind of a yellow orange color, a purplish color, and an aqua color. So I can only choose colors within this selected area here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just block in some layers. Right now I'm using this brown color for the rocks. This is being painted during a live stream and someone's going to challenge me right now to shift my hue. So now I've gone ahead and just shifted my entire gamut mask to a different set of colors. I'll have to change the colors of all the layers here to a different color. And now I'm gonna be painting a landscape that's a little more abstract color wise. So now that I have shifted all of my colors, you can see that I'm gonna go ahead and create a painting here. At first, it looks a little bit odd because the colors are a little bit funky. But when we get to the end of this painting, it's gonna just all kind of work together. The colors will be abstract, but they'll all fit together. And I don't have to worry about putting in any colors that just don't fit into the mix. So how am I using the color gamut mask? Well, I'm choosing the colors that are within the mask, but I'm also using my value slider and my color ramp sliders to increase or decrease the value. I can make any of these colors lighter or darker. What I'm not supposed to do is to change the hue of any of the colors that I select. And I don't wanna do that by shifting the hue in the color picker, nor do I wanna do it by combining colors together that might go outside of the gamut. Now let me just say that this color gamut mask is just a tool, so there's no right or wrong way to make art. You could certainly put in a bright red color that's not in the color gamut, and it would still probably look good in this piece if you used it in the right way. That's up to you. This is just a tool and you can decide when to use it and when not to use it. So if you decide you wanna shift the hue a tiny bit outside the gamut, you go right ahead and do that. But if you want your colors to be more consistent and more harmonious, then you definitely wanna stay within this color gamut. Now, the other thing you wanna make sure to do is to keep your saturation within the color gamut as well. So there's some really saturated colors available in my color gamut mask, and there's some colors that aren't as saturated, like my greens. So I've gone ahead and used a green on the ocean and on the wave, but it's not a very saturated green. I've gone ahead and used kind of pinks and purples in the sky, but they're not very saturated. And if I used colors that were too saturated or too vibrant, they just wouldn't fit into this color scheme. So don't change the hue outside of your color gamut and don't change the saturation outside of your color gamut, but feel free to make your colors lighter or darker if you like. I'll also mention that there are different color modes for your color gamut mask. So right now I'm using an HSL color mode, but you could use other types of color modes as well to choose colors. But as you can see, once you follow those basic rules, it's pretty straightforward. You just pick colors. Now, obviously there's some subjectiveness to choosing colors. Everyone's gonna have a different preference for colors and depending on the scene that you're trying to paint, you may have an idea of the kind of colors that you might wanna use. For example, in this case, I do want it to still be kind of readable as an ocean, so I've left the water green, but I could have also made the water pink if I wanted to, or yellow, or any of the other colors within the gamut. Now, you don't have to choose every single color within your gamut. In fact, I get better results if I only choose kind of a few colors. Now, technically, you're supposed to choose the colors that are in the corner and use those, because those are kind of the colors you chose for your color scheme but I find that if I just kind of use whatever is in this triangle, it's gonna look good no matter what. And since I don't always know what I'm gonna paint and how I'm gonna paint it, it's kind of hard for me to pick the colors first and then say I'm gonna make a color with blue and pink and yellow when in fact I start painting and I decide that it's actually gonna be more purple and green. So again, just kind of think of this as a tool and not as something that you have to do exactly a certain way because you can still get pretty good results if you just tinker around with it. So you can see on the clouds, I made the clouds kind of a purplish color, and then I'm putting some highlights on them that are kind of a peachy color. Now that peachy color reads as a peach color, but it's actually kind of more of a pink color. But what you'll start to notice is when you start to mix all these different colors together that are in your color gamut, they start to kind of work together or harmonize with each other. And so some colors start to give the perception of being other colors. Gray is a good example. You might put in some gray, and it might look like a color that's not actually present in the color gamut. Like in this case, as I'm putting in these colors that are really desaturated pinks and oranges, they're reading kind of more as a bright orange in the sky. Now that's actually kind of a, a gray dull color on the cloud, but it reads as being kind of bright or as a bright highlight. And you can use these grays to your advantage in a lot of different ways. Besides implying colors that are not present in your color gamut, you can also use the duller colors to represent distance in your painting. So if I want something to look farther away, like a cloud, 
then I'm gonna make it much duller than something that's in the foreground that might be more saturated. So as I'm choosing colors with my color sliders, I'm thinking about the saturation slider and occasionally changing that, but making sure not to exceed the saturation of my gamut mask. Then I'm moving the value slider a lot as well. And sometimes I'm moving both to fine tune my color and get the exact color that I want. Now you also wanna keep in mind the relation and values in your piece. Things that are farther away and more distant will probably be a little bit lighter in value than things that are in the foreground and closer to you. So you do wanna use your color sampler just to kind of measure your color and then keep an eye on your sliders and pay attention to the values within those sliders and make sure that you're not going too dark or too light and make sure that things in the foreground are a bit darker than things that are in the background, depending on the object, of course. Another thing that can help objects look distant is adding some environment color. In this case, there's that distant island on the horizon that looks a little bit purple, but it might be made out of the same rocks as the rocks that are in the foreground. It looks purple because it's very far away and it's being covered by some of the atmosphere or some of the air or the particles in the air that end up coloring the light and making it look that color. I could have chosen a different color if I wanted to creatively, but in this case I chose that color because I wanted it to look distant and a little bit more realistic. And if I'm using the color gamut mask in order to get abstract colors that are harmonious to each other, then I want to make sure that I'm using colors that aren't regular colors or normal colors or usual colors. I want to try to intentionally make the clouds pink or intentionally add some funky colors to the rocks. I can even reflect some of that sky color onto the rocks if I want to. But I do want to have a balance here and so some of my colors are realistic and some of them aren't. And that's the cool thing about the color gamut mask is you can use it to choose realistic colors or colors that are more abstract but the overall goal is for the colors to work together or be harmonious with each other. Now at this point, I'm painting without my color gamut mask, and that's because I'm just gonna be sampling colors that are in my painting, and I'm not really gonna deviate from that much. If I do, I'm always gonna be taking into consideration what my color gamut mask is, and not try to go outside of that. But if I do end up blending a color that goes outside of it a little bit, or you know, accidentally saturating a color a little bit more than I should, I'm not too worried about it as long as it looks good. If it looks good, then it doesn't really matter what you do. If you decide midway through the painting you don't want to use the color gamut mask anymore and you want to add colors that are outside of it, if it looks good to you, go for it. So I've been using this technique a lot lately. I find that it's really useful for getting paintings that look more like paintings rather than, you know, I kind of feel inclined to try to paint things realistically sometimes, especially landscapes. And this forces me to improvise a bit and think outside of the box and use colors that I might not normally choose. So it makes it easier to experiment, but when I do want to paint that realistic painting, it also makes it easy to kind of narrow down those colors to a range of colors that are actually in the piece. And it saves me some thinking. I don't have to worry about the colors I chose or worry about overthinking them or choosing the wrong colors. I know that if I follow this guide, it's going to look pretty good. It's like using a ruler. If you want to draw a straight line, you can freehand it, or you can use a ruler if you want it to be absolutely straight. If you want your colors to be absolutely in sync with each other, then this is a great tool for that purpose. So as you can see, this worked really well to give me a nice unified color scheme that isn't necessarily based on reality, but still feels real. But it also feels like a painting, and that's a nice balance. And it's not an easy balance to get when you're just choosing colors just from imagination. You may eventually be able to visualize this in your head and you might not need the tool anymore, but it's definitely a great tool for a beginner or for a professional artist who's just looking for a way to spice up the color in their paintings. Now this is color theory, so again, it's kind of an aesthetic choice for your painting. If you wanna learn more about color theory and why some colors work well together and others don't, I have a whole playlist of color theory videos that I'll link you to where you can learn about how to use color creatively and scientifically. I'll also remind you that I have a video that goes into detail about how to use this tool and how to download it so if you have any questions about where to get it or how to use it or what programs it's compatible with, definitely check out that video. I'll link you to that in the description of this video and at the end of this video. Now, I haven't gone much into the background of color gamut masking, but it's a technique of painting developed by James Gurney. So I recommend that you check out some of his blogs and his videos. He has a YouTube channel, which I'll link you to because he goes into vast detail about how to use this technique. So if you're looking for some more in-depth resources, definitely check him out. And if you want to see the real-time version of me painting this ocean landscape, check out the recording of my live stream. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.